No, but it's too heavy. It's too strong in here. Okay, get yourself, or make yourself a board like this. I've just got a piece of chipboard and I've glued some cork tiles to it. Okay, because that makes it nice for building on and cutting on. So, get your left hand side of the plan. Get yourself a steel ruler and a sharp knife. Okay, so those are your fuselage formers and your elevator. Keep them to one side. So now, what we need to do is tape that onto there. There we go, like that. We don't need to go off the board with that. Okay, so now what I need to do now, cut off the excess there. Right. Turn it over, put some tape on there. So that's the full size. Okay, so now what we can do now is cut roughly around, but not too close, the outside line. Okay, and then we can stick that to the paper plan, to the foam. That's uh, one thing. So it's going to be very easy, we just make a few holes in this and then we can use some tape to stick this to the foam and then we just follow the outside line and cut it free and uh, keep these bits because these are for our farmers. Right, so now I'll show you how to stick all these parts to the foam. Okay, what are the parts you're going to need? Well, you're going to need some electronics, aren't you? You're going to need a small receiver. Now, I use FR Sky, and uh, this is a VD5M mini receiver, 5 channel receiver. You're going to need some small servos as well. So, this one is quite adequate for the uh, elevator, and it's just a 2 gram servo. Okay, this build I'm going to use a 3.7 gram servo for the ailerons. 
that kind of thing. But I've obviously had to cut off the end and put my own connector on because it's a mini one. Okay. I'm also going to need a, a six amp speed controller like this. Okay. And a small motor. Now I like these motors. I really love these small motors. 1504 motors. Okay. So much stuff. Okay. I'm going to need a 2S battery. Okay. So this one applies it perfectly. 180 milliamps. That's great. Okay. Now obviously you could could use a bigger motor but look at the size of that motor it's not actually that much bigger yeah the size it is a 15 motor and that will give you more power but in order to get it to work you need to put an x mount on it put screws on it and now i've got to contend with making holes for the nuts to go in through so that's something else that's adding weight to it yeah if i use this that's going to add weight to it okay we don't want to be adding weight okay we need to keep the weight down as possible or oh, the uh, propeller as well we need on it is this motor anyway. It's going to be a, a 55 53 Pro. Okay. So, anyway, as I said before, weight is critical indoor flying. You need to keep the weight down as much as possible. Adding bigger motor means bigger batteries, more weight. You're defeating the object. You need to keep the weight down as possible. So, as I said before, I absolutely love these on a 2S battery for indoor flying. Perfect power combination. Okay. Right. What else are you going to need? Obviously, you're going to need some foam. You're going to need some foam sheets. Now, from our local DIY store, we can buy sheets of this foam. Okay, it comes in different thicknesses. Okay, it's not as stiff as uh, Defron is. It's quite flexible, as you see. But we don't need any reinforcement for indoor flying. We don't need any carbon fibre, which is going to cost you a lot of money. So. So now we've made some holes in there, and we'll stick that to the phone. Okay, so there you go. That's stuck to the sheet. So now I need to just cut around that roughly. Then I will use my uh, steel edge ruler to cut neatly around the edge. Once that out, don't throw this piece away because we would then need to cut another piece at that length. Alright, so I'm just going to cut roughly around my shape. Because I'll do it neater with the ruler. Because I'll find it more manageable. Okay, so there's my basic shape. Now I need to get the steel ruler and uh, cut it nice and neat. Now when cutting this, go very carefully. Make sure you've got a fresh blade and go very carefully. Don't try and cut through it all in one go because you'll probably end up ripping the foam. It's very delicate, very soft. Just go little cuts at a time rather than trying to do one great big cut.
There we go. I'm doing it that way, you'll get a nice clean cut and no rips. So now I need to do the sides and the edges. When I've done this, it's a very simple build. Okay, so now that I've got the basic shape out, I need to cut the alarms free. But I need to make the alarms so that there is a taper on the foam so it will hinge well. And how I do that, put my ruler on the line like this. Okay, when I'm cutting it, I'll cut at an angle like that. So, first of all, cut through the paper. That's a gentle long strokes first. Continue to cut at an angle. Okay, so there you go, you can see a nice, hopefully you can anyway, see a nice angle on that, nice and cut. Now remember, I cut inwards, I have to do that same cut on the opposite aileron, but this aileron will go on that side. We'll see why in a minute. So. Why not? So go slower. Don't try and do a deep cut all in one go. You'll probably snag the phone. Okay, there we go. Nice neat cut. So, the one that cut off there has that angle in it, but when I swap it over, it has a nice, hopefully you can see, angle. So that'll work on there. So that'll go on that side, and that one will be turned upside down and go on there. Looks like I've caught a bit there. Snag. Not only that, but like that. Right. So now that we've cut the A-line and we've done that, what we need to do is take the paper plan off, cut this section out, because this is where our double is going to be. Then just cut it along the line. So now I need to cut a new piece of foam out. Same as that. And what I will do then is I will glue that foam piece on top of there. Right. So I'll get on with it. Okay, so now that I've cut another strip of foam out, that needs to be glued on top of the wing like that. Okay, so now I'm finished with this bit. Here we go. That piece of foam. I'll glue on there, make sure that the edges are front. So I'm going to glue that on, if that's glued on, in case I take the edges on, take the elevator on, and uh, glue it to the body. Right, so I shall see you in the moment. Right, so now that that part's drying, it's time to work on the fuselage. So before you remove the paper, get a marker pen and mark where the farmers need to go. That's what these lines are here. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Okay, so do this and cut it pad. Okay, so now I can remove the paper. So, now the foam is with the holes in the middle, that's so that you can get the wire through. 
very large chicken parts. So I'll mark them up and remember to put a hole in the middle for this is F2. I'll be using a brass tube again to make a hole through that. It will just make it cleaner. F5. F6 doesn't have a hole in it. Okay. Move the paper back in the face too. Don't remove the paper until you need to, because obviously you'll lose track of light in the song, because that's the elevator, I'll leave it until last. Okay, that's my F1. Right. Time to start on the fuselage. Now, you may need to get sandpaper and sand your edges, you may not have cut them straight, so try, just sand them to get them nice and square. So that's what I will be doing now, once I've got them square, it's a case of lie that like that, and glue your farmers on. Like so, so F1, F2, so F3 will be there. That's F2, that's F2, F3 and so on. Yeah, I shall get on that and, and prop them up so they're at 90 degrees down there. Now right, let me sand them and get that done. Right, they're uh, dry, now time to put some more glue on. What I'm going to do is temporarily hold it in place and then I'll turn it onto its side and uh, weight it down for it to dry. Make sure all the farmers are lined up. Right, so I'll leave that to dry and I'll work on the next part. When that's dry, I can put the bottom of the fuselage on and that there. It, I will cut out and make a trap door for that so I can get to the receiver. Right, so I will uh, see you when uh, that's dry. Okay, so while the uh, foam piece on the top of the wing is dry, I'm going to glue the bottom part of the fuselage on. So I'll put some glue along that section there. Something like that. Level it up. I'm going to leave that to dry. When that's done, I can fold the front part of the fuselage down.
Now this front section will fold over later. Right, so what we'll do, I'll put some weight on that now to keep the bottom edge of the front and down. Right, now we'll see you in a little bit when that's dried. Right, that's the uh, fuselage done now, so it's all glued together, the bottom's glued on. It's a case of sanding any little fedges. 180 is great on a piece of wood, get a nice flat section and give it a good sanding so you get a nice round edge. We glue it on both sides, that's the felt tip pen that's gone a bit too much but we're not going to worry about that, I'm going to cover that up. Once you've sanded it, you've got a nice smooth finish on there. We need to glue this front part over, okay? If it's not quite fitting right, you can use a nail file like this smooth and get it to get a flush fit which is what we have here okay so my next section is i need to glue it in there hold that down and glue that in place like that once that's done i need to then cut the excess off and glue a piece of wood or thin plastic on the front to act as a motor mount okay that is the fuselage practically finished there's not much more work to do on that so once that's done we can then glue it onto our wing which will go under there now before i do that now this section is dry, I need to use the same 180s grit and smooth the leading edge to a nice round edge. So I'm going to get on with that section and I'll see you in a little while. Right, so now that uh, the front part of it has been glued, it's time to remove the tape. Okay, so that's the tape off, so I now need to cut that flush. Just sand that in the file. Right, now that that's flush, we need to fit our motor mount onto that. Okay. A small bit of ply or plastic will do on that. Now the other thing I found is this packing foam that you usually get things packed in that is quite soft. It's not the normal foam, it's for cushioning and absorbing. That thin layer of that I found is very good for absorbing the noise on the motors. So I glued a little bit of that on some ply. I can now glue that onto the front as my motor mount, mark, and uh, fit the motor to that, and uh, that will work well. So I'll go and glue that now. Well, the other thing before I move on is uh, make sure that this is all square. If you need to sand it, make sure it's sanded nice and square. Right, so that's that bit done. Right, let me go and uh, glue this motor mount on, and then uh, it's a case of marking up the, the wing so I can fit that. Okay, so now that I have sanded the front leading edge to a rounded bull nose, it's time to put the elevators on and the ailerons. So here we have one aileron on, I've got the elevator to put on, I've got the other aileron to put on. And now uh, just need to leave a gap like I've done there and use some solid tape. Okay, so again, make sure that the chamfer on the bottom, like that. Okay, so line it up and leave a little bit of a gap like that okay and a small piece of tape so all we need now is three small pieces of tape to hold it into position and that small gap like that Okay, now just check for free movement. There you go, it moves well. Now I could, I suppose, just leave it like that and put another piece on the bottom, but I'm gonna put full length 
now that that's anchored in position and isn't going to move, I'm going to put full length on the top. Like that. Okay. Now I need to trim the edge off. And trim it there. Try and smooth out any wrinkles you may have got in it. Don't pull the tape as you're doing it, just try and put it down. Okay. Check again for movement through, which it is. So now I just need to do three more small pieces on the bottom. About an inch long, like that. So fold your wing over, fold your aileron over. Roughly in the middle, like that. And again, just chin left, put it into position. That was the middle, one on each end. It's only a lightweight model, it's only indoor, meant to be a bit of fun. And, uh, don't need to go overboard, it's going to hold it in place. There you go, check for free movement again. There you go, that's nice and free. So again, the elevator needs to go on. Don't need the paper template. Again, I've sanded one edge. So that needs to butt up against there. And again, small pieces just to anchor it in position. So line it up. A little bit of a gap. And again, before you commit yourself, just check that you've got good movement. There you go, I've got a good mark down there. So now, I'll do a full strip. Now I may have to trim this uh, elevator because it's going to be sandwiched in between two fins. So I'll just have to check when the two fins are glued in position so it's not going to rub against them. So that's the top hinge done. So now I need to just do three small pieces on the bottom and that will do. I don't need to go full length on the thing. So again, it's going to fold it over. Let me just Three small pieces, about an inch. Don't know if you'll see that on camera. So again, one slightly off centre. Like that. Gently pat it around. Really is a nice, fun, quick build this. Very cheap. And uh, when you're flying indoors, and you've got uh, walls and hard floors to contend with, plus the mayhem that's usually in an indoor event. If you crash it and smash it, you've not lost a lot of money. The main thing is to have a bit of fun. Building your own, obviously you can make as many as you want. There we go. Check for free movement again. Plenty down, plenty of up. So, there we go. Not much construction left now, so I've got the fuselage to put on it. 
and the two fins. Now the two fins, when it comes to putting them on, make sure that they're a nice tight fit against there, set it at 90 degrees. Right, on with the next clip. Okay, so now that the ailerons are hinged, they're on, and the elevator is hinged and all checks are working, now we need to put some reinforcement to this wing. We're not going to use any carbon fibre, just going to use some packing tape and some cross weave tape. So the packing tape will go over the leading edge here and wrap around from the top to the bottom and then we need to put some cross weave tape on the back. So simply a case I've just lay it on. Gently pat it into position and then we can roll it around the leading edge. Now don't bend the wing as you're doing this, keep the wing nice and straight. Now what you can see here, the black marks, they've marked up the centre of the wing. So I can position it on the fuselage correctly. There you go, that's the leading edge part done. So now I need to put this over there. That's the tip. This is about an inch wide, this cross weave tape. It'll do, it's probably not perfect, but it'll do. Okay, so now that, that is on, gently pat it on. Hold it over and under the edge, like that. Under the edge. Now another strip, go over there. And this will still be flexible, but you see it's, it is stiffened up, but that will still be strong enough for what we want to bring off on it. So I'm going to be a very light model, but trust me, it's going to be plenty strong enough. And it's going to be a lot cheaper than the carbon fiber rod. There we go. Right, so now that that bit's done, we need to mark out where the servos need to go. So, our template that we used originally, we need to light back on. Okay. So there's our position of our servos. Now, if you want to use three servos, it's 
to pick it out of markers and put those. Whereas what I said I'm going to try this time, I'm going to put the three gun servo up front. So, first I'll do, I'll cut out the elevator servo, which is going to go. There we go. Make sure it's a nice tight fit, and then when you glue it, it'll be secure. Right, so now I need to mark up for the other server, which is this one here, in the centre. Now I'll use this as my centre line. Again, okay, let's take this out. The tighter this fits in, or your servos fit in, the better. Tell me where my centre line is. There. I'm going to push this down on the foam and it should make an indent in the foam as to where I need to make my cotton. Yeah, there's my indent, but not quite square for me. Let's do it again. Get a set square one more. That's better. I'll use a set square. And there's my centre mark that I marked up originally. I want that to get there. There we go. Push that into the foam to make a, an impression. I can cut out. I don't know how well that comes out in the video. Still doesn't look square to me. It'll have to do. There we go, nice tight fit. Pull that. Yeah, I didn't get that square, did I? Never mind. Never mind, it'll do. It's a nice tight fit. Won't matter that much, it's only aesthetically looks. Right, so now that that's done, I need to make the hinges. They're not the hinges, the control horns out of some clear plastic. So, I'll show you that. Okay, so I'll put some glue along all this part of the fuselage, along the top edge of the farmers. Now that that's done, I need to get a bit of foam, scrap foam just to go there, so I've got flat level. I can now put that flat on there. I've marked my centre line there and there. So I need to leave that to dry now. So I've made two aileron control horns opposite to each other. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, out of a 20 by 20 mil clear plastic. So it's basically this shape 
with tamps. Do exactly the same again for the one in the uh, elevator. The only difference is the one in the elevator is you'll be pushing that leg underneath, so that needs to be longer. Okay, so I'm do it again on here. So I'm going to go up the centre, about 10 mil in. Okay, this time it's going to be my outer edges, but I'm going to be folded up the 10 mil mark, which is inch. Uh, folded in half, outer edge folded in half. Put down, get a piece of scrap foam just to make sure you're okay. Next one, add it in a tab. Okay, make sure it fits. It does. Okay, now we need to do our cut for the sweep back. Like that. Make a small hole for the control block to go through. This is on the elevator, we'll be going in the middle. This leg I now need to go straight because what I'll do is a small slot in the elevator, we'll slide that through. In fact, I might as well just show you on this scrap piece. So, I imagine this is going to be my elevator. It's going to want to sit there, so about there. I need to make a slot like that. It's going to be a bit good loop. Okay, and then I can slide that part of the tab through it, like that, and fold it back along the fold I had before. Then when I glue these tabs down, that'll be a nice secure control horn. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, with it being clear. So that's the elevator one. Okay. Two A-lines. I've got to wait now for this to dry and I can move the rest of it. See you later. Looks a bit of a mess like this, doesn't it? <laughs> right, so now I'm going to make another control line. I want it to be that way. The opposite to that one. Just to make it easy. using my pliers here to make the space and I'm going to close that gap up to roughly what I've got there. Yep. Today, make sure I've got this halo on straight. That's all I need to do. Piece of wood, or foam, or you've got close to hand, and clamp it. Like that. All right. Now I know that halo on to be straight. I can connect the good thing, and measure where I need it, which is better. I want to really up the white of it. Let me put it in the other way. There we go. Just so it looks even. Right, and that pipe, 90 degrees down. To start my Z bend. Okay, so I've got it 90 degrees that way. A couple of mils back. 90 degrees that way. And 180 degrees. 
Oh, there you go, there's my foot on, I can chop that off. Remove them. There we go, nice and straight. And I think I have one, two, we're all right from that, don't you? That should be fun. Right, I shall carry on with the rest of the build as I've got the motor to fit and radio servos to fit inside. I mean, receiving and everything else. Right, let's crack on. Okay, to make the hatch, it doesn't have to be too specific as long as it's in that area there. So I'm going to say about there, and about there should be more than big enough for me. What I'm going to use is this as a guide. Centre it up. We don't need a great deal of space really, it's just to get a receiver and get a wire Ok, so I'm going to cut that out now. Keep that because we'll be using that to put back as a hatch. Right, so now I've got clear access to there. I need to feed these wires through. That's the reason why we made the hole originally. Push that through there. There we go, that's one wire through. Make sure you put your hatch. There we go. I've got plenty of room there now. Make sure you make your hatch close enough so you can get to your servo room. Right. So that one there, we know it goes on channel three. Well, it does for me anyway. That's on channel three. That's on channel two. Okay. So now I need to route this one through. The reason why you don't glue it up, you've got everything in. There we go. And that one for me goes in number four. Right, so now I need to put my servo line back in, my rod. And now I need to glue it into space, place. So which way are we going there? Okay, so now I need to glue both these servos into place. But for the time being, can just test it before it's all glued up. Welcome to 
Round two, open TF. Okay, I need to. What's the position of that? Server on coming off. There we go. Plenty of up and down. And the ailerons, I have lots and lots of ailerons. Not going to need that amount, I don't think, but we'll see. Alright, so now all I've got to do now is close up the hatch, put a bit of foam on top of there, and glue the uh, fins on wherever I put them. Okay, so now it's time to put the fins on. Now, in order to get the fins on there, you want a nice tight fit. So you may find you have to give it a little bit of a sand on the edges of the tabs to get a nice tight fit. And that's what you want, a nice tight fit. Like that, see how that's nice and tight. It doesn't matter if it's protruding a little bit, because that will help anchor it look good at 90 degrees. Okay. And glue on the edges. Sure you get no glue that's going to get caught on the elevator. Make sure that's free, otherwise you'll have to cut it free later on. Make sure they're both at 90 degrees. And leave it to set. Right, so when that's dry, all I have to do now is push the hatch in, simply, and put some coloured packing tape over the, over the sides, and that's it, job done. I don't need to glue that in, because if I need to, the clear packing tape or the packing coloured packing tape will hold that in place. That's all I need to do. Right, I will... Uh, See you later. 